Hi guys, um, and welcome back to yet another tutorial on creating a 2D side scroller using Unreal Engine 4. Uh, my name is Wayne, um, and as you know, I've been taking you through all these sessions and creating certain aspects that we need for a 2D side scroller. Um, and yes, it's now come to that time that we're going to start looking at creating a health system uh, for your character. Uh, in our last session, we looked at creating the UI. Um, so we made a uh, progress bar um, that was going to hold our information about the health and we also had um, some text fields that were going to hold information about coins that we might gather um, during the game itself but um, the enjoyment of this is now we get to delve deep into blueprints and creating as we can see a health system for our game itself so what we're going to do uh, without me chatting on for ages is we're actually going to go on to our main screen and as you can see, I've pretty much um, started where we left off. So where we created or added our UI um, to our viewport. Um, so this is where we stopped. Um, and as you can imagine, that was in our 2D side scroller character BP here. Okay. Why am I still in here? Well, because we still need to do one more thing in regards to creating our health system. Uh, basically to start to be honest um, and that is to add what they call a variable um, to our character itself to represent its health because if you think about it the health is attached to your character um, and to have that attached we need to have something that can store information and in this case it's a variable that we need now if you're not too sure what a variable is a very quick answer to that question is a variable just stores information so if for example i was making um, some sort of numbers i would use a variable called an integer if i was using something with text i would use probably a variable um, that would hold text functions like a string or, or something like that but if you remember correctly on our ui so if i just quickly switch over you can remember that the percentage was in a 0, 0.0 state if we wanted it to be at 100%, it was 1.0. Now, this number, okay, is not an integer. This is actually a float. And we need to create ourselves a float variable that's going to represent that 1.0. And to do this, we quite simply, on our left-hand side, go to where it says variables. And on that variables, we're actually going to create a new one. Okay, so we're going to create ourselves a new variable. And you can see mine's already set itself. Yours might be like this. So it might be a Boolean. So it might be red. Now, a Boolean is basically just a true or false statement. And we're going to look at those um, later on. I think we, have we actually looked at them yet. I'm not too sure. But um, the Boolean um, is just a true and false. And as you could imagine, we're using a float. So um, up here on our top right, we're going to change that to a float. And we're actually going to give it a name. So uh, probably name it something that you're going to remember. So I'm going to call mine char health. So our character health. Okay. Uh, I'm going to compile and save. And I'll be able to change its health here. Now yours might be set to 0 0.1. Okay. Or it could be set to 0, 0.0. All right. What, I, what we need to change it to is its health. So the character's health in general, which is 1.0. Okay, which represents a hundred. Um, and I mean, you could do this with, you don't need a float. I mean, you could use uh, integers if you want. So you could actually use whole numbers uh, if you wanted to, but I prefer using floats. I don't know why, um, but it just feels a little bit more comfortable uh, when I'm using floats. I, I suppose I just like decimals, I suppose. Um, but I prefer to use floats. I mean, you could use integers and etc. Now, that's all we need to do um, on our actual 2D side scroller character um, is because we need to put that in place before we start working with our progress bar. Okay, so I'm going to hop myself over to the main UI. Okay, and there's a reason why we need to be here because we actually need to set up our progress bar to interact with our character. So they have to have this link. Okay, so we need to link them together. And to do this, we need to give it a function. Okay, so we need to create a function. Now, we can't go into the graph. Oh, that shouldn't really be that's going on, sorry. But if we go into the graph, all we're going to get is the event graph. And this is something we don't want because this is not a function. Okay. Now, to give ourselves a function, we click on our percentage bar. 
Okay, now remember I showed you we can change the percentage. There's this lovely little button next to it called bind, and this is actually going to bind it to a function. Now, you can see I was working on this before. I made an error before, so that's why it's still there. So I had to cancel my video and, and redo it again. But we're going to create a binding, so a brand new binding. So if I click on the plus, this is going to give us a whole new function. Okay, now yours might be called get percentage zero, because remember I just said that I made a mistake before um, when I was testing, um, actually no, when I was recording, and I, I said a naughty word, so I had to reset the whole video again, so I had to go backwards. But what we have is the function, and what we have here is the piece, the percentage bar, so here he is, we're going to get the percentage, um, and we're going to return something back, um, and obviously if you could imagine this is going to go um, to the character. Okay, so we're going to break the link by holding Alt and click, and that will break the link. And now, if you could imagine, we need this to link to our character. Now, something that's absolutely amazing with, um, with using Blueprints and obviously Unreal System is that we can use this thing called Casting. And Casting allows me to attach or link myself to something I want to work with. And in this case, I want to work with my character and so we can simply drag off this pin and i can type in cast to okay so we're going to cast to something um, and what we want to cast to is our 2d side scroller character here now if you named your character something different obviously you would cast to that um, but ours is called 2d side scroller character which we can see on the top left here so if i click on that it's going to say, okay, I can cast to this, which means I can pull anything from that now. So if I need something, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, which is going to be our next part, um, then obviously we can gain access to whatever we need. However, we still need an object. Okay, now the object, if you could think about it, is actually the character, right? Because we're attaching to the character, so obviously it's going to be the character. So we drag off here. Okay, and we're actually going to say get player, okay, and it's not controller, but it's going to be the character, okay, so we're going to get player character, um, and we're then going to cast it to the 2D side scroller character, okay, now what do we want from it, well, as you know, we want the health, okay, because we set that up here, remember, here's our char health, now if I had to right click and say health, notice nothing comes up okay even if i had to try and type in char health like i did nothing's going to show up all right that's because we need to untick this context sensitive and you'll notice now i'm going to get information from my 2d side scroller character i.e this guy here and what i want to do is i want to get the character health so what he's currently set to and as you know he's currently set to 100 in value so we can attach it to here so the target our health is going to go into the return so that's going to go into the progress bar so hopefully that will be maxed out and all we need to do is then link our cast so we're just making it flow to our return node just like that and now that is going to be how the progress bar is going to function so for example if this changes then obviously the return's going to change. So the, if you can imagine, the progress bar is going to go lower and lower and lower. Okay, so if we compile, save, I've got a little note here, but we don't need to worry about that. And if we play now, you'll notice that the progress bar is at 100%. Okay, because if we have a quick look, my 2D side scroller, I've set my health to be 1.0. If I had to change it, to 0.5 in case 0.5 compile and save as you normally do and play you'll notice it's now half because i've set it to that i've set it to be half so it's only going to take half of that progress bar but we're not going to give our character half health because that puts them at an extreme disadvantage so we're going to keep that um at 1.0 so 100 percent okay so at 100 percent but what we can do is we can start applying, okay, so we can actually start applying damage to our character. 
okay so we can actually start applying um damage to our character now for this part of the tutorial i'm gonna do it by key press okay later on okay so when we start going into um crazy blueprint style i'm actually going to start creating these things called events so i'm going to actually make a custom event and basically i'm just going to keep calling the event so we don't have to repeat ourselves over and over and over again okay so what we can do is i'm just going to do it by a key press so um for example uh, is there anything called keys here let's find the keys Hmm, actually I can't be bothered with doing all that. Yeah, input, and we're gonna look for keyboard events, and let's pick a key. So yeah, one will do. So we'll just pick the number one. Okay, so number one. And basically, all we're gonna do is when it's pressed, okay, we're going to set the character's health. Okay, so we're going to set it. So basically, if I had to press the letter one, the, sorry, the number one now, the character health might set to zero. So let's have a look. Let's see what happens. So let's play, press one. There we go. So all this health then just disappears. It will just disintegrate because I've just pressed that key. But that's a little bit crazy. I mean, geez, I mean, why would we want to put that much damage into our character? It makes no sense, really. That's just rather aggressive. Okay. But what we could do is we could have, for example, um, uh, an enemy, for example, that will do so much damage or spikes that will do so much damage. And we could set that up to do so much. OK, and I'm going to show you how we could do that. So let's say, for example, we've got the character health. So we're going to get that. Now, currently, it's set to one. Right? If, you, if I did that a bit too quick, sorry. You click and drag your character health and drop it and say get okay and at the moment it's set to 100 okay but we can use this thing if we extend and type in minus and we're going to have now this is a float remember so it's a float minus a float okay so float minus a float and i'm actually going to connect this node up to this one okay now this here this is now the control factor of how much damage is going to be given, right? So how much damage the character is going to take. So when I press 1, something's going to happen here in regards to damage. Now, to be honest with you, we're actually going to get rid of this. And we're going to have, for example, um, spike damage, uh, or we'll have bad man damage, or we'll have bullet damage, and they'll all attach to these here. Okay, but for now, as an example, um, we're going to change this value to 0.25, which is a quarter, right? So we're going to take a quarter of the, of the character's health every time we press. So let's compile and save, and let's see what happens. So Alt-P, I'm going to press 1, a quarter goes down, 1 again, a quarter will go down again, 1 again, and another quarter, and then obviously 0, okay? And what we could do then is we could do some crazy things by saying, well, if there's so much damage, um, for example, if it equals zero, then something will happen. Okay, so we could do that. Um, it's, um, uh, so if I say um, equal equals two, so actually, we don't want that. What could we have? Mm. I'm sure we've got some float options we can choose from. So float. Here we go. So let's compare the float. Okay, so let's compare it. So we're going to compare it to something of a value. So we need this to input into there. So we're going to find out the value. And we want to compare with zero. So dead. Right? So nothing. So whatever this is, we're going to compare it with zero. So if this, okay, so if this here, all right, is greater than zero okay so if it's greater than zero um let's print a string so let's print and we're gonna say well okay if you are greater than zero you're alive okay so you are alive okay however if it is less than zero okay so we can print a string Okay, and we're going to say dead. 
right? Because he's going to be less than zero. Okay. Now, if you could imagine by just having these print strings, you can see what you could do. So now that we've got his health down, okay, so now his health is, is very low, okay, or if he's, he's still alive, we can print off some things, or we can, for example, on this dead, we could probably play some sound, restart the game, show a dead menu, or show a dead UI. It's limitless of what we can do. And I mean, if you want me to show you those things, just ask me in the comments, and um, by all means, I can do that. So let's have a look what happens. So compile and save, and let's play. So one, see it says you're alive. One, you're still alive. Again, you're alive. Again, you're alive. Notice nothing happened this time because now that's equal and equal to zero. Once I press it again, I'm dead. All right. Um, so you could, for example, let him have zero health, but if he takes one more damage, um, then he will die. Okay. And that's pretty much how we would create a very basic health system. What's going to happen is we're actually going to get rid of this. Um, and we're going to, just to show you what's going to happen in, in the next few um, sessions, is we're going to call this health system here. Um, and that will take that key press away, and then that will be into there. And every time something happens, we can call the health system if needs be. Okay, but that's for later tutorials. Um, that's not anything specific for now. Okay, so we'll, we'll get to that point. Right, so I hope you enjoyed that video, and I hope it made a little bit of sense to you in how we create the health system for the character. Now, remember, this is a very basic system. It does get very complex later on. Um, but yeah, I hope you really enjoyed that. Uh, remember, if you like to subscribe, like, and share this if you want. Um, and I hope to see you in our next tutorial where we're going to start looking at adding damage. Um, for example, if we put something on the screen, it'll give damage to the character, etc. Thank you very much. Remember, my name's Wayne. It was nice taking for the session, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.